Amen. The scripture reads, Because thy self saith, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and mis miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. You may have your seat. Amen. God is good today. He was good yesterday. And so we don't have to worry about him changing. We just got to go with the change. And the change is how our lives are changed as he allow us to continue living. Amen. Well, uh, just want to kind of focus today for a title. Because you have what you want, it might not be what you need. It doesn't mean that you have what you want and what you need because something is missing. Amen. And we find the scripture just told us in Revelation, it says, because thou saith I'm rich. Now you're looking at your own self. And increase with good. I've got all this, man, I got it made. And have, I don't even need you. I don't even need the church. I don't need... Ain't nothing I need. I got what I want. I'm all right. I'm comfortable. And know it's not that you're not wretched. That you, you don't know. The Sunday school lesson said, thou fool. You know the word is right, but you and you've heard the word, but you want to live like you want to live. And it says, and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable. How many people think they got everything they want and worry to death? Amen. They can't even get along with the children. Then it says, and poor. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit. You got everything but the spirit of God. Then it says, and blind. Can't see your faults. Can't see nothing but somebody else's fault. But your fault is you need Jesus. And then it says, and naked. Adam had everything he needed until he sinned. Then he found himself naked. Amen. We need to find ourselves naked and find out that we really need God. Amen? So I just thank God. Uh, I thought the thought came to me is becoming comfortable with yourself. Don't need anyone or anything. You feel that you are all well and you're successful. That's what we're trying to strive for today. We need to strive for, the Christ, for Christ. Amen? I looked at Jesus was teaching the multitudes. In Matthews, it talks about how a person came to him and had everything. He says, good master, what, should I, what things should I do to become to have eternal life? Well, see, preachers, uh, uh, Jesus was teaching the multitude about the future and having eternal life. And this guy figured, I got all this, but now I need that eternal life thing. So he goes up and says, good master, what should I do? And you know what Christ let him know right quick? There is none good. There is none good. Let you know ain't none of you good out here. But one. All right? And that one is God. He let him know who the one is. Don't worry about it. We look for him. The one is God. He, but he, then he didn't leave him there. He said, but if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. In other words, he gave himself. Now, you know what? He already satisfied with himself. He says, which? You know, somebody say you need to clean up your act. What act? Which? He going to ask Christ, which? Like, like I already got it made. That for You're not telling me nothing I don't need to know. Jesus came back and said, Thou should do no murder. Thou should not commit adultery. Uh-oh, how many of us is caught up in that? We got everything we want, everything we think we need, but uh-oh, we murder? We don't murder, but we commit an adultery. You commit adultery. Well, I ain't sleeping with nobody, but if you have any other God before him, you commit an adultery. Amen. You get upset with your wife and your husband because she done fell in love with somebody else. You say he belongs to you. 
Well, you belong to God and you committing adultery with the world. See, and he said, thou shalt not steal. I'm not a thief. Well, what are you doing? You're robbing God. You don't even pay your offering. You don't pay your tithe. What are you doing? Huh? You giving, you taking what belongs to God. Well, I don't have any money. What about your service? Then it says, thou shalt not bear false witness. We're always on the side of our friends. Sometimes we need to stand up for righteousness. Amen. And then he said, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, me and my mother can't get along, you know. I'm, I'm grown too. No, no, no. She's your mother till she get 95 and you 79. She's still your mother. Your father. You must honor them. That's the word. All right? Then it says, and thou shalt not, <coughs> excuse me, thou shalt love, uh-oh, that neighbor that you can't get along with. Thou love your neighbor as yourself. Not just the ones in your neighborhood, but those that you come in contact with. Huh? Love them so much that when you walk in the light, for he is the light, and it'll draw them. All right? Then it says, young man. We look at it. The young man, I mean, he, you know how you're caught up in yourself. All these things have I kept from my youth. What like I yet? He, he kind of, you know, they used to smell himself, ain't he? Huh? He don't even know who he's talking to. Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect. See how calm Jesus was? If thou will be perfect. When you're perfect, you don't need nothing else, do you? Well, he's standing there asking Jesus, how did he get something? Well, I mean, you, if, you, if you need something else, you ain't perfect. He said, if thou will be perfect. Well, then what he said, with, uh, he turned around and said, go and sell that that thou hast and give to the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Well, you know, we look around the day. Man, you got to be crazy. Do you know how many generations we went through to get this? You don't know how they got it. But do you know, this was my ancestors, or this, this. I worked too hard for this and this. Maybe you did work hard for it. He said, but sell it and give it to the poor. He didn't say you can't have wealth and all this, but sell that right there and give it to the poor. God looked at what he had. See, I already know how you got it. He know what you have. He don't care how hard you worked for it, but you focused on it and not him. So now he says, and when you do that, you have treasure in heaven. Well, God gave Abraham Isaac after all that suffering. All that long time. Then he told him and tell him to go sacrifice. That's your, my only son. No, he was obedient to the cross. What? But then Abraham, at least one thing, no, if God provided this, he can provide that. Job, when Job, God took every, let him everything go by the wayside. And Job, I'm going, hallelujah, through. Huh? Matters what the world do, my friends going to say I'm going through. Even when he got to his wife, she said, you need to cut your God and die. No, I'm going through. Huh? That's what we need to do today. Don't look at possessions. And he said, this man, he went away sorrowful. You know why? He had great possessions. Somebody said, well, I wouldn't give all that up too. That's all right. Great is he. He owns what you have and can blow on it tomorrow in a tsunami, in the tornado and all. And now what you're going to do? Standing out there in the wind. See, he can stop the sea, the air. He can, he can do anything need to be done. Now you done talked about somebody. Now you just got off and got in this airplane up there in God's skies. Oh, and you know what? You know, you, you're comfortable, huh? All at once, let the airplane. Man, what's wrong here? And you see this little brother over there. God touches, touches. This one little guy over here praying. Man, do you know that? You know how to get a prayer through? Now he's up there where he can't put his feet on the ground. See? But this is the God we're talking to. And it says, another thing, valuing your status and possessions above God and man. Covetous. 
What you got is all you need. What you got is all, I mean, you work too hard for this. We find out, I don't know how our Sunday school lesson comes up so much in, in things we do, but it must be God. Amen? I looked at Luke, it says, I'm just showing you different ways. Here's another one comes in, he says, he got possessions. We got inheritance. He said, Master, uh, I want you to speak to my brother that he divide his inheritance with me. And we got inheritance today. We don't want them. They need to hurry up and die so we can get what they're leaving us. We get so hot, we had to call somewhere out there the two brothers kill their parents to get the inheritance. Then we fight over it around here. Some, some of us then got to where we get inheritance, inheritance to the dogs. You, if you look at it, if some of the stars on the star, the movie star, they can't get along with the kids, leave everything to the dogs. Leave it to the forest or some of this. But what I'm saying is this, when you live for God, you don't have to worry about where you're going to live it to because you don't know when you're going. And he said, Christ asked him, he said, who made me judge uh, to divide over you? He let him know that you ran here concerned about these things that are substance here. But he said, life consists not of abundance of the things which can be possessed. If all you want is an inheritance, you don't want nothing. You don't have nothing. We need to stop looking at what the future is and look at right now. Because God is sovereign, and he has everything. He owns everything. He controls everything. And see, Jesus preached. Huh? This was one of his messages he was preaching. And he spoke in parables. What he told the disciple, now he got their attention. He got the multitude's attention. Sometimes when we talk, Sometimes the best thing we can understand is when we talk about a story or something that's happened. Pastor, sometime when he teach, he'll tell us about an event that just happened or something that's fresh in our mind. Well, he told him, he said, a certain rich man. See, when I'm, it's the subject's talking about rich man. You, when you think you don't need nothing, you don't have to have rich in money. You're rich in your little attitude and what you think is how much power you think you got and don't have nothing. But he said he was a rich man and his land brought forth plenty. Oh, it looked like, you know, some people say, I got a green thumb. Everything I touch just grow. Well, he said that his, the, the land was just plentiful for him. It was so plentiful that he thought within himself. He didn't praise God. What shall I do? I got so much, man. I'm going to tell you, I got it. I have no room to put my fruits. Other words, everything I got is just being fruitful and fruitful. Now, he got the, he's going to boast. Christ is just letting us know, example of ourselves. You got everything but Jesus. And he says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down not my barn, but my barns. He got plenty of them. And I'm going to be all greater. Well, I need to get a bigger house. I done outgrown this house. Oh, you're cheering gone, but you done outgrown this house. When you bought this house, they didn't have a man cave. I don't have no wall. I can put a 75-inch TV on now. Huh? And I can't invite the dudes over. I can't have a, a lady day. You ain't left no room for God. But he says, and he said, I thought what I'm going to do is tear these bonds down. And he said, now it's time. What we're doing, we want to just compliment ourselves for what we got. God don't have no room. So I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to make some room. And then after I get through doing that, he says, I will say to my soul, huh? such much as I have Goods laid up for many years. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink. And I'm going to be merry. Boy, I'm going to tell you, they're going to be talking about me for days, man. 
My cars don't have to get dusty because I got somebody when I drive it, they just drive it in the garage and they keep it clean for me. They keep it gassed up. When, when I speak, they listen. But he said, and then, you know what? We had in the lesson this morning. Paul said, told the Galatians, by them being careless with God's word that had been imparted to them and letting other things influence them. Well, here, God said to them, thou fool. Ooh. See them, you can't call, if God call you a fool, all you do is just tell them what you're doing, go read that scripture. He'll be the one call you that. This night, thy soul shall be required of thee. I don't care how much you got, you going to have tomorrow. I don't care what kind of deal you made today, you don't have tomorrow. You don't have the rest of the day. See? But we talking about something that we don't even have control of. But he said, so he that led up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. He's, you're in trouble. People fighting over what you done lived all your life for. And he said, man, at least he should have left a will. God didn't let him leave a will. He going to just blow on it. Huh? See, we need to live for God. And I looked at Proverbs and said, honor thy Lord with thy substance. He didn't say honor one another, honor the Lord with the first fruits of thine increase. You find that in Proverbs. Proverbs will get on young men. It'll get on all of us. Tell you, sons, hear my voice, hear your father. It'll tell you how to run the family. You don't have to worry about getting that wrong. But he says in Proverbs 9 and 10, he says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. You shouldn't have to give the God second best. In fact, give him it, give him it all. Amen? And said, with the first fruits of your increase. The first fruits is not what's left over, not what begin to spoil. It said here, so thy barns will be filled with plenty. Wouldn't it be nice if God built the barns for you? And then fill them up. Somebody said, man, I, I don't know. You giving everybody stuff and your barn stay full. He that owns the barn owns the substance and he owns you too. Why should you have to worry? And thy presence shall bust with new wine. Every time I give God something, look like I reach back. And you know what? When the preacher went by and told the lady, told the young lady, he said, man, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm getting ready to Make this morsel of meal and me and my son and go die. But you know what he told her? He said, well, first make me a cake of bread. You know what? She did not hear an attitude in that. She heard the man and the word of God. So she made that. And he told her and he says, you have plenty. When she got through, as long as she, when she obeyed God, God opened doors for her. This was a famine. So why don't, if you ain't got but a hot nickel and two quarters, give it to God. See, what you can't do nothing with it, let him do something with it. It's not in what you have, it's who you belong to. We find out, and I was looking at Deuteronomy 28 and 8, and it says, the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. In all that thou settest thy hand to do, he shall bless thee, and in the land that God giveth you. It didn't say nothing but blessings in that. And they all came from the Lord. So if you give what you got to the Lord, let him bless it. Well, I tell you, man, you need a new car. No, let God bless the car you got. You might be driving right beside the car that's going to be yours, but if you don't enjoy this one right here, you might never get to enjoy that one. See? God let that person keep on bearing after a while. He's, hmm. 
You pull over like he said, and you know what? I know that you I know your car act up every now and then. Look like you so happy with it. Look, just take the keys of this one, because I got somebody to come pick me up. And the title is right in the dash. Don't you know there are people that they got new cars they need to give away? You know, and you look in your basement, there's something you got tags on it. Oh, I'm gonna just I, I don't know who to give this to. Well, you talking about a little old shirt or sweater that you never wore. People got homes and cars and things that they don't even need. Only thing now, I'm tired of paying tax on this. My kids don't want it. And you know what? God can say, okay, give it to this little sister right here. See, God is this kind of God. All he do is connect you. With, you ever heard of connecting the dots? And it's said, happy is that people. You won't be complaining in the street because you belong to God. You'll be living right. This man, why are you always happy? We got a pandemic going, people dying, and every time y'all put somebody in the ground, all I hear y'all doing over there is shouting in the church. How can y'all do that? Don't you miss them? Yeah, I miss them, but God called them home. He said, happy is that people, that is in such a case, Happy is that people who is God, if your God is the Lord. We got a lot of gods out there, but which one is yours? And it says here, Jesus told his disciples, when this man done done all his wants and whatnot, and God done told him, you ain't going to make it. Not with this. He went away saw it. Well, the disciples leave, you know, leave your mouth hanging over. Who's going to make it in heaven? He said, that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. Or he said, oh, well, they say you're rich. Now, God said, I, I have a thousand hills. But he said, but Jesus beheld him and said, with men it's impossible. But with God, all things is possible. You're going to see some rich saints out there, but God comes first. Everybody you see out there doing good and wealthy, shouting don't mean they stealing and lying. God can give you things that you don't even have to pay for, put you in houses you don't have to build. All you do is be rejoice in the Lord and be exceedingly glad. That's the job that you have to do. And so when we look at this, we said that uh, looking at our scripture, we should be able to walk and be a walking sharer of his word. God showed me this morning when I was listening to Mother, Mother Green as she was teaching, and he just showed me. Men are sick today. When you got, you got foot problems, you got back problems, you, you go to the physician and you expect to come out of there with something. You expect to come out of there feeling better. If we live for God and the world come to us, they should expect to receive something. And they don't need to receive no attitude. They don't need to receive no opinion. Or the word can go with them and the word can keep on going with them. That Peter in Acts said, Peter said unto them, repent and be ye baptized. Every one of you, not you, 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 no, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. I ain't seeing. He said, all of sin and come short. They're talking about he talking to you. He's talking about me too. All of us. Because you can, you have omitted sins. There are sins you don't know you did. So ask God to wash me. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter wasn't saying, well, all of you on this side and this side. He said, no, repent all of you. Don't say she needed more than he needed. He needed, no, 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 all of you. Praise the Lord. And he showed me, I thought I said, I started pulling my coat off. I said, you know what? I said, if I pull my coat off and dropped it, passport I'm getting hanging up, I said, but no, 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 no. But I said, but if I pull it off and drop coat filthy, I pick it up and look at the label in there. The label in there says cotton, silk, whatever. But it tell you to wash it with a certain, or send it to the cleaner. But then 
you, me, fell down in sin. God reached down and picked us up. And he looked at that inside label. And when he looked at that inside label, say, dirty but washing in the blood. When he washed me in the blood, it washed me from the inside. See, it ain't going to get tore up in no machine. He going to wash me in the blood. He dipped me and dipped me, but not only that, he washed me. I'm not smelly anymore. Somebody, I'm presentable now. But what did he wash me in? We wash things in the wrong thing, but he that created you know what you have need of. And see, and he told us in John 3 and 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his own son. While you and I was out there doing everything we thought we were big and bad, uh, God still loved the world. Who was the world? You, me, you, and all of We was the world. But he said, my people that are called by my name. So those that have come under the fold of Christ, we need to walk in that responsibility. When you go to the foot doctor and you expect to be good, when they come to the saints, the saints should need a word of truth. The saints, should, they should see the saint first. When you say, which one the doctor? He got a little white coat on, a little blue, blue coat on. And got a little thing around his neck, stethoscope. Well, see, when they come to you, you need to have some kind of garment of salvation on you. You need to have something coming out of your mouth that's truth. You can speak healing. You can speak deliverance. You can speak comfort. But you can speak the word. It says, God, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Christ let you know everybody ain't going to come under the fold. But don't let him stop you from believing. He said, not everyone that say to me, Lord, Lord, enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that do the will of my father. Huh? Other words, when you do it in the will of the father, you walking up right. You live in right. When they throw mud on you, you don't go find mud and throw it back. Just wipe it off so you be ready for the next mud they throw. See? But it says, when you tell them, don't just say, people say, well, okay, well, you know, uh, you came up in a good environment. No, 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 no. He's talking to us. He said, in Romans, you, you all know the scripture, Romans 10 and 9, it says, if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you be as doing all of this in your heart, not, not just talking, you're doing this in your heart, something got to change. And so, therefore, when you confess, you know when you say and believe in your heart, that starts some action. You don't confess and walk back. Well, they told me this. No, 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 no. You heard the scripture say, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. When he change you, your direction change. It says, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. You got a whole bunch of children, but all of them ain't dear. Some of them, you, boy, let me get ready for this one. You understand? Do you want to be the one that God said, oh, here he come. No, no, no. You want to be the first one. See, but it says, yeah, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Not by your own mercies. But it says that you present your body a living sacrifice. Not a cast off, but a living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Holy, acceptable to God. Now, you know what? You ain't doing God no favor. He said, that's your reasonable, sir. That's the least you can do. 
When you do that, you done said, Lord, I'm yours. Everything I have, everything I am, I'm yours. Songs say, use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me near every day. He get you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, want to use you, and you're going to go grab the clock. Huh? Your reasonable service. And it says, when we do this, we find ourselves working for it. Because if we work for sin, it said the ways of sin is death. But when we work for God, we got eternal life. But we find out in, and I'm getting better to finish, we find out in Philippians, the Bible tells us, be careful for nothing. Philippians 4 and 6, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Our, prayer been, our pastor been talking about prayer, prayer, prayer. Our bishop been talking about prayer, prayer. Well, I tell you what, if we get through doing all this prayer, we're going to have something. You might not have no possession, but I'm going to tell you what, you should have a better life. Huh? You need to get something. If you didn't do nothing but get up that morning, you get up and say, Lord, thank you. Huh? So you got to look at the benefits of praying. And then it says, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I'm getting up. No, 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 no. Lord, I thank you. We start out the prayer. God, good morning to you. I thank you for my life, health, and strength. And not dragging. Lord, I thank you, but you let me make it over this morning. I'm partial. No, no, no. God, you gave me full health and strength. I'm not barely mittening. I'm middling. You know, people say, how you doing? I'm barely middling. I'm going to tell you what, you need, to, you need to look again. See? And it says, let your request be known unto God. So if you're barely middling, you need to ask God, God, why am I barely middling? He said, you haven't kept the faith. You see what I mean? Making an excuse for the situation we're in. God let you get the first step. You better be glad. Amen. And it said, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds, not through yourself, but through Christ Jesus. So you ain't the one keeping yourself. All you are is getting up and getting in the way. But you need to get up and give God the praise. And then... As I close, it said, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, we don't want to be true all the time. Being honest, we just feel like we wasn't there. We don't know anything about it. But God knows. He knows everything. And then it says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, you shouldn't be in any, in any report that's not good. Huh? Praise the Lord. He's letting you know. He says, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, you can't come up here and hold up your hand and say, Lord, I love you and got sin all over you. No, 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 no. If you're doing this, you're asking God, God, I need you to forgive me. I need you to watch me. I'm surrendering to you. Huh? You ain't praising God like that. He ain't going to accept your praise. But God is a good God. So what, is, what, my, what I want to say today, you can think you got all you want and don't know what you need. And you can be satisfied because you got all you want. But as God said, if you don't have Jesus in your life, if, you don't, if you're not a child of God, you can't say he made all of us love all of us. He does. He made us all and loved us so much until he gave his son. But you know what? That same God that did all that loving, you know what he said? Present your body a living sacrifice. I mean, all of you. 
all, not just your legs, and all, not all of you, so you can think, so you can walk. When you do this, when you do this, you belong to him. Amen? And then when you do this, you don't have to worry about what the world is doing because the world is full of sin. But that same God that told you, if you are my child, you're going to be happy. But if you're not my child, it's a damnation. So don't make it sweet for people. If a person don't want to live right, you don't judge them. You don't give them opinion. If I tell you that street is closed, that's all I need. I don't need taking looks. Let me show you. No, the street is closed. Now, I could have told 15 more people the street was closed. But when I told you, now I'm spending the rest of my day trying to explain why it's closed. If sin is sin is sin, and I ain't telling you, I'm giving you the word. This is what it says. Whosoever shall call on my name shall be saved. Number one, are you saved? Well, if you ain't, step two, call on his name. Believe in your heart. Let him come into your life. Don't say call on your name and check the scripture to tell you how to do the rest. Oh, if I call, if I tell you, sometimes we don't have time. You're on your way to work, mother, and your person come by, you say, well, look, baby, you need to be saved. How do I get saved? Well, you need to do this, and the person is interested, want to know about the Lord, but I got to go to work. Maybe I need to call a job and say, look, I'm a little bit late today. You don't need to explain I'm going to be a little bit late today. And when you give it over to Jesus, it is more to rejoice in that soul of salvation than that little, little old job you got. Because when you get through doing God's work, you don't know what kind of promotion is coming. Hmm? It might have not been the job, but that healing that you've been seeking when you got through God healed you. That's, oh, Lord, I'm healed. You see what I mean? I don't have to pay the doctors no more. So I just ask you today, if you think you got everything you need, you still need God. Amen? And if you don't have what you need, you still need God. Amen? So we're going to ask you at this moment, if you focus on the Lord, and we're going to ask God to come in today. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we know what we know, but we don't know what we don't know. But God, when we know you and you know us, we still, our knowledge is very limited. But first of all, God asks you to wash me over again. God, I might have walked through something that was dirty, Something that we, today, God, we can't see everything. People are dying because they have been contaminated. Had they seen the contamination, they might have not walked in it. But Father, sin is a contamination also. People not, maybe not see the sin, but they could become a part of it. But God, watch us over again. God, we don't want to be struggling because of sin, God, even though you said man is born of a few days full of trouble. But God, let it be good trouble for us. Once we come to knowledge of you, let the trouble not be of our own. But God, we ask you to purchase and cleanse us right now. Deliver us right now with your mighty hands in the name of Jesus. God, we that are remnants let us not just be here for his sake, but we that are remnants, we are physicians, we are technicians to do your work. The harvest is plentiful. And God, we are a few labels and don't want to work. But God, enable us to see ourselves. When we walk, let us walk up right before you because when we walk through a contaminated land, let it become purified in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we're not asking you to take us out of the storm, but God, let us have deliverance in the storm. 
We are in the storm with everybody else. But God, if they can see that we are being delivered, it'll draw them to you. You didn't, in, in uh, Egypt, you didn't take the children of Israel out, but you protected them while he was there. We're not asking you to take us away from here, God, but keep us while we're here, Lord, and let us do the work in the mighty name of Jesus. God, those that are sick this morning, where is your God? First, let them meet the condition. The condition to know that they need you because you are the healer. You are the deliverer. I can't take the merchandise and don't want to give up nothing, but God asks you to heal them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, but we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to our worship service here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We pray that something was said or done that encouraged you, that empowered you, that strengthened you on this day. Now it is time for us to give you an opportunity to sow into the life of ministry here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. And there are multiple ways that you can give. First, you can give via Cash App by giving to Dollar Praise Center VA. You also can visit our website, praisecenterkojic.org. Click on the giving link, and it will allow you to give via our website. You also can go to PayPal for those that like to use PayPal and send your donation to info at praisecenterkojic.org. And then last but not least, you can give via Givelify by searching for Praise Center Church of God in Christ in Dumfries, Virginia. Make sure you see my face or Lady Yo's face on the image and you will be giving or donating to the right location. We pray again that you were blessed by our service and we want to let you know by you seeding into the life of Praise Center Church of God in Christ, we're going to declare blessings be upon you. God says, when we give, it shall be given unto us good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We speak blessings to be in your life as you have sown into good soil here at Praise Center Church. May God bless you and may heaven shine upon you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.